What's going on y'all, it's Tyler, hope you're doing well. Thanks for checking out this video of mine. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the cost of ownership of the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Now for the sake of this video, I'm gonna define the cost of ownership as the total cost of equipment and accessories needed to shoot video and create content on the camera. So I'm not gonna go over the most expensive lens and monitors and all that kind of stuff. I'm just talking bare bones, what it takes to start shooting video and creating content with this camera. So when you open the box, you get the camera, obviously, you get a battery, you get the AC adapter, and DaVinci Resolve Studio. And those of you that are new to filmmaking and new to editing and aren't really using a particular editing software, I would say, and this, I would say for me personally, if I were just starting out, I would just use DaVinci Resolve Studio that came with the camera. It's a $300 software and you can edit, you can do graphics and obviously color grading and stuff like that all in one package. And it's become a much, much more robust editing suite than it has in the past. So if I were new and just starting out, I would definitely just learn DaVinci Resolve instead of Final Cut or Premiere Pro or something like that. So yeah, so that's what's in the box, but it doesn't come with a lens. This doesn't come with like lens kits or bundles or anything like that. So the next thing you're gonna need to look into getting is either a native lens, like a micro four thirds mount lens or an adapter so you can adapt lenses. So if you have already existing lenses, if you're coming from a DSLR or something like that, say like a Canon or something, then and you just need to get an adapter to adapt your lens from EF to micro four thirds. And there's an adapter out there, the cheapest one that I could find that had the active mounts was a calm light adapter, I think that's how you pronounce it. So it is a smart adapter. It does have lens contacts on either side so you can change your aperture and stuff like that. But it doesn't have any kind of like glass in it. So it's not a speed booster. It's just a pass through adapter so you can change your aperture and stuff like that. But if this is your first camera and you don't have any existing lenses or anything like that, then I would consider going and getting a micro four thirds mount lenses. There's a ton of options out there and they're usually much smaller. A lot of times you can find them for really cheap, especially if you get them used off eBay or something like that. So one lens in particular that I would recommend getting is the Panasonic 14 to 45. It's a F35 to 5.6, I think. I used to have that lens when I had the original Pocket Cinema camera. That was the first lens that I purchased for the camera. It's kind of close to a 28 millimeter to 90 millimeter on a full frame equivalent lens if you want to think about it that way and it's great i picked mine up years ago for like 120 bucks off ebay i think new they're around 200 bucks or something like that i looked at the ebay sold section just now and they're going from anywhere from 75 bucks to 200 bucks so just to keep this simple on this video i'm just going to say 170 bucks for that lens and it's a great lens has optical stim image stabilization and all that kind of good stuff okay well the next thing you absolutely need for the camera is something to to record onto, I'm talking recording media. So either SSD drives, SD or CFast cards. The most economical way of shooting video on this camera is getting the Samsung T5 SSD drive. It is an approved drive for recording by Blackmagic Design. So there are a couple of things that you're gonna need to get with the SSD drive to be able to mount it onto the camera so it's just not like dangling off to the side or anything like that. The first thing is this guy right here. This is just like a little cell phone holder and it's got a quarter 20 thread on the bottom and one on the side here. It's got a little spring in it here and it's super sturdy, it's not going anywhere. This is a really good way to hold the SS3 drive onto the camera. And if you got the holder, the next thing you're gonna need is one of these little guys. They usually come in like a two pack or something like that. And this just threads onto the bottom right here or to the side of the little cell phone holder. And then this allows you just to attach it to a cold shoe mount, which is the other thing that you need to purchase is a cold shoe mount. Now I just got like a two pack of small rig ones and that just allows you to attach it. I have a cage on here, but there is a quarter 20 thread on the top of the camera. And this just allows you to thread it right here. And then you're ready to start recording onto the SSD drive. So the next thing you're gonna wanna get are batteries. The battery life on the camera is not the greatest. We're gonna be conservative and say 30 to 40 minutes is about as much life as you'll get. I've been using these little Wasabi batteries right here. They've been really, really reliable. I've been really digging them. And for like 25 bucks, you can get a two pack of batteries with a double charger. I would recommend just getting three of those. So that'll give you six batteries and six chargers. That should give you, you know, around three and a half to four and a half hours, depending on what you're shooting and the environment and stuff that you're in. So that's really all you need to start creating content with the pocket camera. And we're at about 1,670 bucks, but that's relying on the internal microphones on the camera. Now they're not awful. Actually, they sound pretty good. They're better than most DSLR internal mics. However, I wouldn't stop there. I do think it is necessary to get better audio 
and that's why I would recommend getting a shotgun microphone, something like the Shure VP83 or Rode VideoMic Pro. That's one of the pricier things on this list at about 200 bucks. But what you're getting is you're getting much higher quality audio and get one that has the ability to output a 20 dB gain boost out of the microphone. And the reason being is the internal preamps on the camera are pretty bad. And being able to boost the gain out of the microphone means you can bring that input level down on the pocket camera. That way the internal preamps aren't doing the heavy lifting with regards to recording audio. It's a lot of it's coming from the microphone. So you'll get cleaner and crispier audio that way. Having said that, if you get a microphone, you gotta find a way to attach it to the camera and you've already used your one quarter 20 thread for holding the SSD holder. That's where I'd recommend getting a cage. The one I have is a small rig, it's about 80 bucks and it opens up a ton of more possibilities for expansion in the future. And it has a built-in cold shoe mount on the top and a bunch of different mounting points for the camera for you know extra accessories but it also provides kind of a protection shell around the camera it's made of aluminum and it's super robust and in my opinion i i think it is an extremely beneficial thing to have on your camera to be able to expand in the future and just to protect your camera from bumps and all that kind of stuff so with all that included that's about 660 bucks additional cost that you're gonna have to put into the camera to be able to start shooting video and stuff with it don't expect to just pay 1295 dollars for the camera and be expecting to go off and start shooting just for that price now obviously if you already have cfast cards or you already have a microphone and stuff like that it's going to bring the cost down but this is kind of geared towards someone that really doesn't have much equipment at all and needs to build up a kit to start shooting video. So if you found this helpful or entertaining or anything like that, definitely give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything else that you think that is just absolutely necessary to have to start shooting with this camera. And if you haven't done so, please hit that subscribe button and that notification bell next to it. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see y'all in the next video. Peace.